Hey, Internet friend, this is Magic Brad with the Magic Brad Show, and I've got a new friend down in the south part of town, and his name is Jason Courtney. You there, Jason? I am, Brad. Get on. You're in Florida. Wonderful Pensacola, Florida. I remember I, I did another uh, interview with the guy in Florida, and I said, out east, right? He goes, no, west Florida. And I was trying to go, wait a second, where is west? Oh, that's right. You're like a peninsula. So you've got a Western Ocean and an Eastern Ocean. It's different. Yeah, we're connected to Alabama. Most people don't realize it, but I'm in Central Time. Uh, everybody that schedules a meeting with me schedules it for Eastern Time, and then I have to adjust by an hour because we're technically Central. Really? Because I'm in Central. That's interesting. I never knew that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, just east of uh, Panama City in between... Panama City and Tallahassee is where the uh, time zone changes. That's so wild. anything east of Panama City pretty much is going to be eastern. Anything west of Tallahassee is going to be central. Wow, that's pretty bizarre. I was thinking, okay, I'm up here in Minneapolis. We're sort of the middle, and they go straight down to Dallas. That's probably where the time zone is. But you stole some of our time. I did. I did. <laughs> That's I like it better, too. Well, there you go. I, I, you learn something every day. I just learned that uh, Florida's got a central time zone. I never really thought about that. So I thought it's way over there. Yep. Everybody does. So, so how long you lived down there? So I've been in Pensacola for 21 years now. Uh, I was oh. raised as a Navy brat, so did a little moving around at first. But uh, got here when I was 10 and been here ever since. Were you a brat when you were young? Uh, my parents would probably tell you I was. I might disagree, but <laughs> I had a nickname. It was Bradley the Brat. Oh, so, but I don't because because a brat isn't that is that an acronym for something? Someone in the service, a kid in the service. A, so I'm not sure. That's just what they always called us. Was were military brats. You don't have to look that up because I was a brat because it was, I was I wasn't a very nice. I was mean. Not mean. I was disobedient. <laughs> had to be told multiple times that's what brings in my entrepreneurial spirit i've pretty much been self-employed all my life other than a stint of uh, employment out of high school but um i was the kind of kid that bought the candy in bulk and then resold it to my classmates at a profit hey you gotta start <laughs> somewhere that's right so you're in the commercial cleaning business i understand from my little notes here that is correct. We clean commercial facilities, everything from schools to medical offices to lawyers to uh, CPAs. So if it's a commercial facility, we'll, we'll clean it. Apartment complex? So we will do the, uh, the common areas of it, but we will not go into the houses. Uh, the sure. apartments themselves are is just a different type of cleaning yeah. with knickknacks and personals. Well, that's their own thing. They're supposed to take care of their own deal. But the, the apartment complex is a commercial building. So I could see you guys. Absolutely. We get those people down there vacuuming and keeping all the, the, the hallways clean and all that stuff and much appreciated. Yeah, we take care of that. We'll, uh, you know, the uh, guest house where, uh, where you guys typically have like a pool table or the pool area will clean up around there. So we have several HOAs oh, cool. that we do that for as well. So would that fall into also the uh, area of like, um, like Airbnbs and stuff like that because people rent that out. So it sort of ends up being a commercial property. Would you do something like that? So we haven't taken that on yet. We still view that more as a residential clean just because of the types of items that are there. Um, but we keep talking about it because especially living in Pensacola where it's a vacation destination, we have tons of condos and lots of Airbnbs. So it's definitely a potential revenue stream. And what's the name of the company? Office Pride Commercial Cleaning Services. Okay, so that kind of lends itself to it. Uh, to probably started in the commercial office space and then you branch out a little bit. Got it. Absolutely. How, how about stuff like that there's a a friend of mine and his whole thing is about um, after they have water damage or a fire, they come in and they clean all that stuff up. Is that somebody that you like, collaborate with? On so like we that? collaborate with them. We don't do that kind of work. We have a couple of companies here, such as a uh, complete DKI. I have a friend, Ashley Carpenter, who is a co-owner there. So we'll sub some stuff out if there's severe water damage. We do 
uh, carpet extraction. So if, if you've had some a pipe burst and you just have water on your carpet, we can definitely help with that. But if you start talking about cutting out drywall and remediating mold, you have to have certain certifications for that. And yeah, you clean we, it, you don't reconstruct it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so we just uh, we just clean it. So we'll, we'll extract your carpets and, and point you over to Ashley and those folks over at Complete. If you, want, if you want us to clean your moldy uh, sheetrock, we'll clean it for you, but we're not gonna take it down. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's Somewhere right. We'll spray it and wipe it down, but that's that's what we can do for you. How long have you been in this business? So I've owned the business now for five years this month. Uh, so August 16th was our five-year anniversary. And uh, I've actually been with Office Pride since 2011. Okay. So what did you, did you work for them as an employee and now you, I started off as a cleaner part-time making minimum wage, which at the time was seven twenty-five an hour. I cleaned uh, the Northwest Florida blood center three hours a day, five days a week, and then went to night school out at the Knightsville campus of Northwest Florida state college. So I'd become a cop and I uh, just started kind of growing with the company, went from cleaner to floor tech to supervisor to manager and a uh, total total god story for me is i walked into the owner's office and happened to see a business broker's pamphlet on their desk and i'm one i don't like secrets or i just went in and asked him the next day I said are you guys selling a business he said yeah we are and uh so i talked to him about it and we had a two-year journey of sba loan processing to purchase the business but uh, my brother and i finally did that in 2015. Totally different world, huh? Completely different. <laughs> it's all on me now. Yeah, I uh, like I mentioned earlier, I've been self-employed all my life, so I kind of don't understand the concept of working for somebody else. Just because it's, I don't like the idea of having to punch a clock. Not that I, I can't be on time for things, but I just don't like having to do it. You know, like with your, you're uh, in control. If you're, if you've got a client that's just a pain. You can fire them. Absolutely. <laughs> so That's the struggle because then you have, every time you have a difficult customer, you know, you could lose revenue. So it's, yeah, it's one of those, it's, it's really got to, you've got to weigh it in your pros and cons. If they're, you know, if they're bringing you down and keeping you from growing, then yes, the best decision is to cut them loose. But if you're just doing it because it's difficult, you'll never grow. So we've, we've fine tuned that we've had a couple of customers we've let go over the years, but more often than not, we, we try to figure out how to work with them and improve things. So you, you do work with a lot of different commercial types of buildings. What's your favorite to work for? I know that there's some, like I used to be in more so in the event industry before the COVID thing happened. And sometimes you got these clients that say the budget is $20,000. The theme is the blue Danube. We're bringing in the Commodores, make it so. And then they just let you go and do what you wanted to do. That's a great yeah. client for me because they don't have all these questions, you know? Perfect. Yeah, uh, for us, it's banks and credit unions. Uh, okay. Typically, it's a five day a week clean, so very consistent. Um, right at 530, you can get in, so it's not like you've got to go in late at night, nine o'clock at night. Uh, typically, they're easy cleans because I mean, they're bankers. They're not messing yeah. around with a bunch of industrial equipment and getting grease everywhere. It's, it's just very easy. So Vacuum for us, we've dust. really done well with that. And yep. they have money. <laughs> got they do money. have money. Yeah, they got my money, they do. <laughs> they do, they have all of our monies. Very cool. Hey, I didn't ask, are you married and got kids? Or are you just uh, out on your own? Just out on my own, so uh, I've, uh, I tell people I've avoided that for the first 32 years. We'll see if I can keep that stretch going. Uh, well, that is so, another factor in the world of self-employment and owning a franchise and all that kind of stuff. You know, having a, a spouse and kids that are part of the deal. Because here you are yeah. working right now. If all of a sudden the kids came in, what are you going to do? You know, you got to deal with exactly. it. Exactly. I don't have any myself. My wife's got one that's old and grown up. But um, it, it is a whole different situation when you've got someone else you have to deal with. Did you say you went into this with your brother? I did, yeah. So my brother and he has two daughters now. They just had their second one uh, last month. So, uh, and then I have a, a sister and brother-in-law. They have one as well. So I have three three nieces that I like to spoil um, and, 
and enjoy their company. But like you said, it's on my terms, so I can yeah. see them when I want to and don't have to when I don't want to. Yeah, sort of just a rental. Exactly. <laughs> have fun, load them with chocolate and caffeine and send them back. That's right. That's great. So you primarily focus with your business down in the Florida area, right? We do. So we're, uh, we're located in Pensacola. We serve all the way from the Alabama state line to Panama City. And then we have one in Tampa that handles the Hillsborough County area. So then if anyone is looking to have their commercial space cleaned up, it's a big radius of all that, or do you have other territory that you can't? So yeah, we can, we, we have a lot of freedoms, but so being a part of a franchise network, there are over 130 franchises in 26 states. Um, so as long as we're not stepping on anybody's toes, we kind of have some freedoms to, to go up and help out wherever need be. But if it's in someone else's area, we can also put you in touch with them. I have a lot of great friends that we've made in this industry. Well, that's the cool thing about like some people that used to be a, my old business partner, he was all about competition. And to me, it doesn't make any sense. Why don't you collaborate? Because there's a possibility of, hey, if we work together to get this client, why don't we both work on it and get it cleaned up in half the time and still make a bunch of money? You know, it's all, it, be flexible. Yeah, it's, it. it's, it's got to be a healthy amount of competition and collaboration. So yeah. uh, I have a best friend, Chris Middleton, who's in Indianapolis, and uh, he and I collaborate often, but we're both high competition when it comes to strength finders. And... So we find ways to compete in it, but always to help each other get better. Sure, that does make sense. But to, in the business world, I never really understood the whole concept of competition because there's, there's really not an end goal and there's not a time that runs out. You're keeping on going. Like I always had this vision of uh, the guy from Coca-Cola and the guy from Pepsi in a little fishing boat going, hey, do you want to be number one this month or should I? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I was fortunate. I was at a conference last year and got to hear Simon Sinek speak. Oh, cool. And uh, he spoke of business and a lot of people view it as a finite game where you can win. And in fact, business is infinite. It cannot be won or lost. It is constantly being played. And so he speaks very similar to you where, you know, it's not anything you can achieve. You can, you can hit an achievement but you have to continue or digress. There is no, once you've hit it, you're done. Right, some people are these goal setters and they have these little check boxes. My wife likes to check off little boxes and have little tasks and stuff. And I'm kind of like, it's in my head to get it out of my head, I implement and it's done. <laughs> I, so I probably lean more towards your wife because I, I like goals. I like to set things up, but I do have, we follow, a uh, system called Traction. Uh, it's it's a entrepreneurial operating system. And uh, so I am the visionary. I cast the vision, I set the goals. And then my vice president is our integrator. He goes out and makes all those things that I want happen. Um, and it's, the, it's a great structure, great platform that helps us to hit the goals that we've wanted to hit. So in, in five years, we've gone from being a very respected franchise to being the largest franchise in our system. So very cool. Yeah, if you got the two different elements that kind of if they can work in harmony, you know, someone might be more of like you said, uh, here's the things to do, and here's someone who says, give me something to do, and I'll go do it. You give them the deeds and delegate. It works and out super attention. well. Yeah, it can work good that way because uh, having a business and having employees and stuff, it's kind of like a marriage. You gotta be in in harmony. Um, oh, yeah. I've never really been able to work with uh, employees. I've always kind of been myself and kind of like, let me get this done. That's just the way that I am. Yeah. So we have about 225 employees now. Oh, wow. um, and it has taken a lot of work on our end and a lot of mindset change on my end. I've always been the, the employee that's like, I die for my company. I, I would do whatever is asked and until the end of time. And I expect that out of my employees, but it's not a realistic expectation unless you draw them to that. So we've implemented things like employee uh, surveys and engagement activities where we 
rent out baseball stadiums or uh, bowling alleys and sure. just really get them involved and excited. So that's been a big part of it for us. Yeah, that's my background in the event world, doing employee recognition events and incentive trips and all that kind of stuff, going having fun. Well, what ideas do you have during COVID? Because we're struggling. We're, we're trying to find a way to get them involved and it's hard. That's just it. It's all zoom like this and uh, that's what, what people are doing nowadays however you can get creative and just go out and do like a like put together a road rally so that's something you could do so everybody gets in their cars and you have a bunch of like a scavenger hunt kind of thing you have to go to places and do things i like that idea and that way they, they stay socially distanced it could even be in their <laughs> own own individual cars we did a we did a, one of those things like that and it was kind of funny because one of the the things to figure out that you go and you do the thing and then asks a question. And there was, we did it in this big park and there was this big flight of steps that went down the hill to the creek. And then you, you found a little thing and it said, how many steps did you just walk down? <laughs> it was 111 steps. So they had to walk back up and count the steps so they could go on to the next thing. So it's kind of fun putting the, the little scavenger hut together because you can do those little things. Yeah. And um, it is very difficult with all this, uh, you know, doing events and it's all digital now with these webinars and stuff. But if, if you wanted, you can create little games like that and have people like get on these little individual Zooms and figure things out and then report it all back. So you can take games and they just happen to happen digitally, which uh, it saddens me quite a bit because I used to like to go to these events and there's a place up here called Top Golf where you can go drive balls and there's a very familiar with it. There's a um, indoor uh, skydiving place. There's um, a cruise that if you're familiar with up here with the Prince made Lake Minnetonka famous. Okay. But there's a big lake chain up here west of the cities. And uh, there's some boats that a guy has a what, about five boats on there. That you can rent these boats and go cruise around for brunch or pizza and we used to do a lot of these little cruises. You know, you get a bunch of people up there and I, I would do, I do what's called the event marketing. So if I had like, like say for example, we were doing a client event for you, we would set up a deal to go on this brunch and then I would strategically invite a bunch of people that had commercial buildings. And then we'd be on this brunch for two hours and you're there and all these people that are owners of commercial buildings are there too. That's a good place to be. Absolutely. <laughs> Because you're stuck on a boat for two hours with your, with your prime client. Yeah, you're not jumping off to swim. Yeah, so we do those events like that. Similar like Top Golf, you know, you just invite a bunch of people to this event. And the wonderful thing about places like Facebook is you can niche those people down and find out exactly who they are. And then you invite them to the event. And nowadays, it's these Zoom events. You might get on and do a, like I was saying, like a scavenger hunt or something like that. And a, Get a bunch of people on there and say if you were the one to sponsor the event and we get a bunch of people on that are random people playing this this uh, digital scavenger hunt only you know that all the people that are on there are owners of commercial buildings so you could do something like that it wouldn't be an employee event or you can right. make an employee event too and say we're going to invite friends and then you would strategically invite people that are commercial building owners Hmm. Great ideas. You know, where I got all that was um, when, I, when I was a kid, I started doing magic. So that's where the Magic Brad show comes from. Okay. And I did magic through grade school into high school. And then I went and I was working corporate events like Cargill, Medtronic, 3M, General Mills, Honeywell, Pillsbury, all those corporate because that was where the money was and that's where the audience was. And I didn't want to chase them and make phone calls and knock on doors. So I created a trade show for event planners. So all the event planners would come to this trade show to resource all their different things. They needed like limousines and caterers and florists and all this, these resources for them. And that gave me a database of really good people that filled out little forms telling me we're doing a company picnic for 3M for 3,000 people with a budget of $15,000. We want a tent and a pig roaster and a bouncy thing and a magician. And I go, there's a lead. <laughs> yeah. So every year they would come there and that was my lead generator for years. So that's how I got the idea of doing an event. 
to bring your ideal client in. So great. if you ever want to talk further on that, I'm an open book. We could do something off the recording and we can have a sure. conversation about how to go about something like that. Cause it's, I'll, I'll get into that. We'll have a conversation after this. Let's talk, let's talk Perfect. about you. <laughs> All right. So how do people in your area get a hold of you if they wanted to possibly have you with clean their, you do windows? We do windows on the first floor only, nothing above one story. We can sub it out. We have some great subcontractors, but okay. insurance to dangle over the side of a building is crazy expensive. That's right. No dangling. So the best way to find us is going to be online. You can go to www.officepride.com. And then there's the option to select city, state, and uh, you'll find us, like I said, in Pensacola and Florida. If you're not in our area, I would love to invite you to reach out to our other guys in Office Pride. They are, it's, a, it's a great group of family that I get to see and hang out with. We're going to have our, our yearly owners meeting in uh, two weeks virtually. So I'll be hanging out with all of them. And if you tell them that you uh, heard about us on the Magic Brad show, uh, I'm sure they'll get that back to me because I'm going to be talking about it in our, uh, in our conference in a couple of weeks. Very cool. Well, I'm going to sign this off and beam it up to the universe. So I appreciate you taking the time to be with me today, Jason. And uh, what I do is I'll get this up My to pleasure. YouTube. And then I'll get you a link and we can kind of collaboratively share it out. So if you want to stick, stick on here a little bit, I'll have a conversation with you. We'll talk about that event marketing strategy. But I appreciate you taking the Thanks. time. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Have a great day.